In eight years, the International Space Station, a bastion of global collaboration and human ability, will end. NASA knows that. And nearly two years ago, the agency placed its bets to develop commercial space stations for four companies, Blue Origin, Nanorax, Northrop Grumman, and Axiom Space. Sadly, as the U.S. Space Agency now looks to find a successor to the International Space Station in low Earth orbit, this landscape is shifting dramatically. At the International Astronautical Congress meeting this week in Azerbaijan, sources report that there is widespread speculation that one of these four companies, Northrop Grumman, is dropping out of the competition. Besides, talks between Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin and Sierra Space regarding the Orbital Reef project now appear to be souring. NASA is hanging by a thread. Luckily, like three years ago, Elon Musk's SpaceX will be able to save NASA once again. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. SpaceX Starship is definitely the best bet for the commercial space station Earth needs. NASA already has contracted SpaceX to build a lunar lander based on its massive Starship rocket. Elon Musk dreams of using a fleet of Starships to take settlers and the supplies they will need to survive on Mars. Some scientists have even considered what planetary missions the Starship might enable. And, an early concept imagining a Starship taking a crew to an Earth-approaching asteroid was discussed during an April Planetary Defense Conference in Vienna, Austria. Recently, a NASA document surfaced revealing an unfunded Space Act agreement between the agency and SpaceX for preliminary design reviews examining the potential development of a commercial space station derived from the Starship. The document describes a variety of steps that must be undertaken for the reviews to be completed sometime after 2028. The schedule of milestones that could lead to a Starship-derived space station is ambitious. The next launch of the Starship provided that the Federal Aviation Administration approves it would take place at the end of 2023. A Starship flight with a payload would happen in the first quarter of 2024. A Starship flight in which the vehicle lands intact back at the Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas would take place in the third quarter of 2024. The design reviews of technologies relevant to a Starship-derived space station will follow. To talk about the benefits of the Starship space station, the sheer volume inside a Starship-derived space station would be its main advantage. SpaceX Starships are way larger than the ISS. Their size is similar to the external fuel tank of the retired space shuttle. People are like ants crawling around on this thing. That's an 18-meter tall fairing, and the body is 9 meters wide. Although it does obviously start to taper down at the nose, that still gives us four fairing sections at full width, which equals about 7.3 meters of height at the full 9 meter diameter. In total, that adds up to approximately 1,000 cubic meters of internal volume, which is just a bit larger than the ISS at 935 cubic meters of space. This is a lot of room, it's larger than your average five bedroom house. SpaceX's Starship is so large and also so cost-effective that it could be a station itself, said Chad Anderson, founder and managing capital of Space Capital during a session of the Financial Times Investing in Space conference. He suggested that it could disrupt business models for other commercial space stations. An example he gave was a hotel company outfitting the interior of Starship for customers. They could launch a group of people and stay however long they want with the accommodations they want and they could do it all for less than the cost of one seat to the space station today. In the past, proposals for space stations were based on the external fuel tank, which would have been challenging to construct. However, the steel construction of SpaceX Starships offers ease in welding, cutting, and modifying, making the construction process more manageable. As a result, the development of space stations becomes more feasible and cost-effective. Space radiation poses a significant challenge for astronauts in space. However, computations show that at orbits below approximately 500 keem near the equator experience significantly low radiation levels, and that reduces the need for extensive shielding. 
by strategically placing a giant wheel of rotating SpaceX starships in such an orbit, it then becomes possible to generate artificial gravity that's equal to one gravity. On top of that, this location would provide a safe radiation environment for the occupants. With plenty of volume available within the starships, supplies can be stacked around the hull, which provides additional radiation protection. Even with one meter thick shielding, this stuff is still gigantic. One of the other remarkable advantages of SpaceX Starships is their affordability. With a price tag of approximately $2 million per Starship, a fleet of 50 Starships would only cost $1 billion. Such a space station with a volume 100 times greater than the ISS could accommodate up to 350 people based on the standards set by the ISS. It is worth noting that the ISS was originally designed to support seven people, but temporarily hosted a record of nine individuals during a handover in 2009. With that in mind, a space station based on giant starships with a capacity of 450 occupants during surges would be super cost effective with an estimated total cost of around $2 billion. And the result? Space travel will no longer remain exclusive to billionaires. Instead, it will become an opportunity accessible to folks from all walks of life. Regardless, the Starship's rocket engines and fuel tanks constitute the main disadvantage of using it as a space station. They would become excess mass once the space station is deployed. No doubt SpaceX engineers will contrive some kind of workaround. For one thing, a space station with its own propulsion system once it's refueled can be moved anywhere it is needed perhaps to a higher Earth orbit or even in orbit around the Moon. Ideally, several of the companies exploring commercial space stations would succeed. The idea is not to replace the International Space Station with a single commercial option, but rather to have several that will constitute a new industrial space infrastructure. Low Earth orbit will no longer be confined to a few government astronauts and those civilians with the vast financial backing to go. Travel to a commercial space station will become in the main a profitable enterprise. The money spent building and maintaining the ISS has been well worth the investment. 3D printing experiments conducted on the space station have the potential to revolutionize everything from aerospace engineering to medicine, some of which will be commercialized in future commercial facilities. Of the various efforts to conceive and build a commercial space station by the end of this decade, a SpaceX commercial space station has the most likelihood of succeeding. The track record amassed by Elon Musk's company if nothing else, suggests that will be the case. Even though some have found SpaceX's string of successes to be a problem, for most others it will be something to celebrate and, for the company's competitors, something to aspire to. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high-quality content, Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.